He did it. And he said an amazing thing happened. He said by the time he had asked each person and he looked them in the eye and they looked him in the eye and forgave him, by the time he was through with this process, he felt this great sense of release and cleansing. And he said, um, he went to Don Miguel and he said, you should write a book about this. Don Miguel says, no, you write it. <laughs> so he did. But what he found was, after a few months, he started feeling kind of bogged down again. You know, life's happening, right? Feeling angry or hurt about something. And so what he did was he meditated, and then he brought up each person he could think of in his life who had harmed him or who he thought he had harmed in any way, and he asked forgiveness. Now, the funny thing was, he asked forgiveness of the people that he felt harmed him. But, he said, again, this incredible sense of release. And then he asked forgiveness for God, from God. And then he asked forgiveness from the hardest person on the planet, himself. And he said, finally, he was able to forgive himself. Not that he'd done anything so terrible, but I think we all do that. I'm Go back over past, maybe I wasn't perfect. And he said this process was so incredible for him that he indeed had to write that book to share it with people. So you can do it, a process like that, or you can do it in prayer treatment. And truly know that there is only love. That all of us, no matter how we act, are expressions of God, have that quality of love in us. And that we want love just like everyone wants love. And moving from holding baggage of grudges or hurt into love frees us, and we're light, and we can move into new experiences. You've heard Dr. J say many times, I live and move and have my being in God. Notice the word move. It's not staying stagnant. Moving our minds from negative thoughts to the truth and to the belief in what we want. Believing it and letting go creates it in our circumstance. In the game of life and how to play it, Florence Shin emphasizes another aspect. Your intuition. That Spirit of God within you, that little voice that speaks when we listen. And how important it is to practice that listening. And she talked about a woman who had really learned to listen to her intuition. And she was a religious scientist and she believed in treatment. And so she did this prayer treatment, saying, Infinite Spirit, open the way for my immediate supply. All that is mine by divine right now reaches me in great avalanches of abundance. And then she added, Give me a definite lead. Let me know if there's anything for me to do. For she was feeling at a very uncomfortable place financially. And she said shortly afterwards, the thought came to her that she should give a certain friend $100. She thought, you know, here I'm asking for money. And <laughs> I'm supposed to be given. But, you know, she felt like that was the little voice speaking to her. So she gave the friend $100. And shortly afterwards, a large sum of money came to her. So treat and move your feet. Treat believing. Do the prayer treatment. And then open 
to the little voice within and do what you need to do. One of my very favorites teachers, Emma Curtis Hopkins, even though she's no longer on the planet, she's still teaching millions of people and has taught. In her book, Scientific Christian Mental Practices, she says, if I were to be asked directly as to the quickest way for a scientist to get his healing power going, I would probably say, praise everything and everyone in your mind. Praise everything and everyone in your mind. There's always something to be grateful for, even if there appears to be a lot of things we're not happy about at a moment. There's always lots of things to be grateful for. And that attitude of gratitude is taking the jump from getting stuck in what we don't want into moving into new good. There was a story of a man who was in one of those slumps. And he thought, I don't know, you know, I am having trouble getting into the attitude of gratitude. And then he had an idea. He thought about all the people in his life who had helped him over the years. And he started writing letters to these people. And the ones that he could find the addresses to, for, he sent them. And it was amazing what it did for him. And it also was amazing what it did for the people who received the letters. So gratitude. And I think one more way to help yourself jump is to laugh. When Cher and I were leading the last peace night, I led a meditation. And what kept coming to me during the meditation was children laughing, people clapping, ha, ha, ha. And I thought, that is a weird thing for a peace <laughs> to come to me during the peace night. <laughs> but you know, the children laughing. And I just got this real kind of buoyant, joyful feeling. And I truly do believe that laughter can help us jump and can help us bring peace can help us bring the joy that we want into our lives. Well, you've heard stories now of how lots of people have moved into new good in their lives. How they believed and that jump started the universe into furnishing their good for them. I encourage you to treat and to jump into an even more joyful life. Thank you. Thank you.